Well, hey there, Math9. So we're on to lesson 2.4, entitled Determining the Square Roots of Rational Numbers. So at this point, we're going to look at the square roots of values that may be fractional. So in this lesson, I could ask you, the, what is the square root of 16 over 36? Or what is the square root of 36 over 100? It's a little bit different. You haven't been asked in in the past, or at least in the recent past, to figure out the square root of a fraction, something with a numerator and denominator. Now, in the two examples I just gave you, if you listened carefully, you heard that the numerator and denominator turned out to be perfect squares. That's the first hint in the lesson. We'll look at perfect squares of rational numbers, and then what we'll do, we'll switch it up a little bit, square root of, oop, there we go, square root of rational numbers. And then we'll look at what would it be if we didn't have a perfect square. So something like, say, think along the lines of the square root of 15. That's not a perfect square. But we can figure it out by approximating because the nearest square root is something like the square root of 16. But it'll all come out in this lesson. Okay, so our first uh, little bit of work here is to crank out a few definitions. So the first one is a perfect square. is a number that has a rational number as its root. Now the idea behind a, behind a perfect square, let's say, just draw this off to the side. If we said that this square had four columns, and I'll do my best here, four rows, it would have 16 squares in total inside. Now, if we just do a little bit of erasing, and I'll just put the number 16 inside because you've seen where it's come from, if go. If as it turns out that this has an area of 16, it was four rows and four columns, that happened because it was a four by four square. So if the area is 16, then that came from two identical factors. 4 times 4. In this case, a perfect square is a number that has a rational number as its root. Example, 4 over 1. Remember that whole numbers are rational. Your square root, as you see in this example, the square root of 16 is 4. And we can express that as square root of 16 equals 4 one of two equal factors. And as we saw above, those factors would be 4 times 4. We go back to this. You've probably seen this before. Um, 81 is a number with a perfect square root because, it, because 9 times 9 gives you 81. If we go back to our, choose a different color here. If we go back to our square analogy, how do you get a perfect square like 81? It's almost like you're being asked the times tables. What two numbers that are identical when multiplied give you 81? 9 times 9. These values, both of these 9s, are what we call dimensions. So dimensions are the length width and when we get to something that's three-dimensional we will also talk about the height. Right now when we're looking at these squares there's just two dimensions length times width and, and they're identical. The reason why a perfect square ladies and gentlemen has to have identical sides. So our length and width 
can be written with the letter S because the sides are identical. It really doesn't matter if you say length times length or width times width. It's irrelevant because it's a square. A cube would have length, width, and height for its dimensions. But remember, a cube is a, a two-dimensional object where squares, the way we're drawing them, are two-dimensional objects or flat on on the page. They have no depth. Let's move down here a little bit. What are some of the perfect squares that you need to know? This is where I say a little bit of times table work never hurt. If you look at your times tables, and let's say you start with your ones, the two factors have to be identical. So if you have a little tiny square that's one by one, its area inside is also one. Now, as we move up in perfect squares, do a little zoom here. If we look at a two by two square, of course not drawn to scale. If it's two by two, then that would give us an internal area of four. So you can see where these numbers come from the square roots of each of these values 1, 4, 9, 16 those can pop right out of your imagination if you've had times, uh, time to, a, a little bit of time to work with times tables if you manage to absorb those go through multiplication of two identical factors here they're starting with 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 3 by 3 that gives you a pretty quick idea of what the area of these perfect squares are. 5 by 5, 25, 6 by 6, 16. Switch colors. 7 by 7, 49. So all they're challenging you to do here is how do you get an area of 64? What would its roots be? And by its roots, just remember what they're asking you for are what would two identical sides be to give you an area of 64? 8 by 8. Now I know some of you out there might be saying, well, what about negative 8 times negative 8? That would give you 64. I'm going to avoid the negatives because the square root of 64 can be negative 8 because negative 8 times negative 8 would give you 64. But have you ever constructed a house with negative side lengths? It doesn't make sense. So for now, we're just going to forego that example. We'll just let it go. Let's keep these roots as their positive roots. 8 by 8, 9 by 9, 10 by 10, 11 by 11, and 12 by 12. Perfect. What we can do is we can look at the areas. If you think about these, this side represents the area of a square. So let's put inside if this area length times width was equal to 4, that came from a root of 2 and the other side is a root of 2. What we do is we just say the square root of 4. And what that means is, when you say square root, you're asking for one of the roots of the square. Maybe this will help. If I wrote it like this, and I said that the sides are the roots, all you need to do is tell me just one. Once you tell me one root of the square, I know where the square came from. It's just one of the sides. Oh, okay, that really clarifies it. Square root of 9, 3, 16, 4, because 4 multiplied by 4 would give you an area of 16 inside. Let's extend this pattern down a little bit. Square root of 36. On your calculator, you can hit 36 and square root. It may appear like that on your calculator. Or sometimes you have to hit the square root key 
and 36. Still other calculators will have a little funny sign like that. And you hit that button, and then you hit 36. No matter what you do, you should get an answer of 6. Make sure you're in degree mode on your calculator. Square root of 49 is 7. And if you notice, curiously, I'm just counting up. There we go. There's our square roots. Now I've emphasized this in green. This little bit here, it says explore square roots of rational numbers on page 72. I'm going to pop out to page 72, a little bit of our textbook, and I can write on this. This is, kind of, this is quite handy. In this case, explore the square roots of rational numbers. So how do you get the square root of 16? Well, what have they done? They've done what I was doing in my previous example. On a piece of grid paper, they've got one, two, three, four rows. And they've got one, two, three, four columns. If you count up all the squares, you'll see that there are 16 of them. So the square root of 16 must be equal to 4. Gotcha. In this case, the square root of 16, all they've done is add it on a row. And boy, does that show you just how quickly the area changes. Because you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 by 5, an area of 25. So either one of the roots, the answer is 5. Now it gets a little bit more interesting when we look um, at a, a 10 by 10 grid. And I'll just show two of these. This is grid paper. And what they've done is they've set up that go they've set up a tiny little square this is a uh, this whole grid paper goes 10 by 10 so they're giving you um, quite a bit of space to work with and what they're trying to do here let me just get rid of that is they're trying to show you on a grid that you only have 25 of the squares so 25 out of 100 if we think about it as a rational expression that's 0.25 we're not looking at even a whole value. This is this is a quarter. They're asking you for the square root of a quarter. You look at that and you say, oh, haven't seen that before. Don't worry. Look at this. This little part right here. And you say, I see 25 there. That's kind of, you say, how am I going to, how am I going to deal with this? One way of looking at it is think of the roots of 25. This is a neat little technique. The square root of 25, forget the decimal, say the square root of 25 is equal to 5. Now 0.25 has to come from two identical values. If you take 0.5, and multiply it by itself, you will get 0 0.25. And here is a technique I was taught long ago. It's very valuable. In 0 0.25, see if I can erase. No, I can't, so I'll just I'll switch colors just to make a point here. Make sure I hit done, otherwise it switches the colors I already had. OK, let's go with, say, brown. 0 0.25 has two numbers after the decimal place, 1 and 2, right there. Its factors have to have at least, well, not at least, they have to have one number behind the decimal place. It's a little trick. If each of these numbers has one number after the decimal place, 
when you do the multiplying, your answer will have two items after the decimal place. So it's a little trick. Look at the number without the decimal. Think of 25. Think of the factors being 5. Now, how would you adjust that? If it's 0.25, I'm going to need each of my factors to be 1, have basically have the the 5 just behind the decimal place. And that gives me two of them. And my answer has two numbers behind the decimal place. Now that's one way of going about it. Kind of a neat technique. If you've never seen that technique, you can still look at the grid right here, 25 over 100, and you could still determine, uh, you could still determine your answer pretty quickly. Uh, one way is to look at the square root. Oops, let me just erase that. Uh, undo. Ooh, ooh, kept doing it. Ah, there we go. This here you haven't gone all the way up to a full one. You've gone, if you think, uh, let's just choose the brown color. Yeah, I'm good with that. You're only halfway up. So you can say I'm one, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm halfway over. One, two, three, four, five. I filled up half this grid. Okay, so this is if you have a piece of grid paper with you. You can say that it's you've gone halfway that way and you've gone halfway to the middle of the grid if you go to multiply these together 0 0.25 or one quarter of the grid has been filled in let's choose um, I have to say I just want to choose a red color here for you to fill this in. If you look, that is one quarter of our grid. Holy smokes. This is a quarter. This is a quarter. This is a quarter. And 0 0.25 is one quarter. Holy smokes, that's a pretty neat way of going about it. So I've shown you a couple little techniques. First way over here. This technique. And the second technique was to look at something like a hundreds grid. In the example in in uh, in B here, how would you get 0 0.36? I'll show you with a fraction, and I'll, I'll use a little bit of space down here below. I'm gonna go to blue this time. Let's look at the square root of 0 0.36. So for now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna skip this for a moment. 0 0.36. Another way is thinking of it as 36 over 100. Folks, what's the square root of 36? So let's just do a little square root. What do these come from? Like, what two numbers make up 36? Well, the square root of 36 is 6. And while I'm at it, the square root of 100 is 10. Now you look at that, you'll see that's pretty interesting. Let's test it out. Is 6, 6 out of 10 times 6 out of 10? Oh, wow, there we go. If these roots are identical, what that's really saying to you is that you could think of this side as being 6 tenths and this side as being 6 tenths. Alternatively, you could write that as a decimal. 6 tenths, we know, can also be written as 0 0.6. And if you do the math on that, you get 0 0.3 six as your area in the middle. So this technique has to work. I've shown you a couple of ways to do this. What would I go after? 
if I saw 0 0.36, it's it, it I guess it depends really on, on which way I feel like going. I know that's 36 over 100, and I can take the square root. The 36 had to come from something, and since it's 36 one hundredths, I could just take the square root of the top and the bottom and figure out what 0.36 had to come from. 36 over 100 is 0.36. Alternatively, I could do the technique that I showed you here. This one here. And I could determine the factors with just that, that idea of treating it as if it is in a decimal and figuring out how many numbers would have to be behind the decimal. That works too. This technique here, this one that I showed you here, works just about every time. And if you have to rely on just one technique, write the number as if it's a fraction and take the square root of the top and the bottom. And you'll do quite well with this. This is very reliable because you can always write the fractional bits as their decimals pretty quick. 6 over 10 isn't too hard to figure out as a decimal. And you can write those roots in. So that's a really, really, really good technique. Okay? I've shown you a couple of ways about doing this. It's your choice. You can choose from a few of them. Okay. Go back to our lesson here. Now there's quite a few of these. It, it, since this is a recorded video, I can do this pretty quick. Let's say you have uh, an area that has a square of 55.4. What's the length of the side? Don't be afraid to draw. Because what they're asking you is it's 55.4 centimeters squared. So what did it come from? How many centimeters by how many centimeters? On your calculator, if you want to find this pretty quick, to find the roots, you could hit square root of 55.4. And once you do, you will have your answer. Now, since I'm sort of working on this document here, I don't have a calculator sitting in front of me, how would I figure out what the square root of 55 is? Well, the nearest square root to something like 55, I guess if I'm just approximating in my head, I think of perfect squares that are nearby. 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. So if 7 times 7 gave me that one, and 8 times 8 gave me that one, if I look at 55, it's, it's obviously going to be above 7. It's going to be 7, and I'll just approximate 7, 7.4. Now, a way of approximating, you could do this kind of funny sort of wavy equal sign. You could say, say, 7.4. Now, I figured that out just off the top of my head, working with square roots, perfect squares that are nearby. The square root of 55.4 is imperfect. It's it's not it has doesn't have two beautiful numbers that make it up like a seven times a seven or an eight times an eight or a nine times a nine. It doesn't have that that sort of whole value. So we say it's it's an imperfect square. And you see that quite often when you see sort of an odd decimal like that. Is zero point nine a perfect square? If you drew a square, I have to switch out of blue because I'm getting so sick of blue. I could choose a whole bunch of colors if I want to, but let's go with green. 0 0.9 is a perfect square. I'm going to go back to that technique that I showed you before. 0 0.9. What could 0 0.9 come from? You know you're supposed to hit the square root of 0 0.9. What I'm going to ask you to do is look at it and think, well, 0 0.9, what, what factors could that come from? Well, what times what could give me this answer? Hmm, here's a hint. 
change 0 0.9 to a fraction. So we'll go 9 over 10. And I just have to hit pause here for one second, folks, and I will be right back. Okay, just had to come back here. There we go. And let's just see here. Perfect. Sorry, folks, my cat needed a little bit of food. When we look at this now, uh, it was 0 0.9. If we write it as a fraction, if I take the square root of the top and the bottom, let's switch... Uh, Let's switch colors to red. If I take the square root of 9 and I take the square root of 10, well, the square root of 9 gives me 3, but the square root of 10 doesn't give me a number which is rational. I get the square root of 10 is going to be just a little bit over 3. It's like 3 point, I'll just use an x because I'm approximating. So it's essentially 3 and a little bit. Because it's 3 and a little bit, it's, it's not a, 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 a rational number. It's not, if you think about it this way, it's not just a simple sort of whole value over top of another whole value. What you've got is a decimal portion there. So this is not a perfect square. A perfect square has to have two roots that are whole number values. So this fraction technique works out pretty well. You could look at this one, apply it the same way. This is 9 over 100. So what did that come from? Well, if I take the square roots of 9 and 100, I get 3 over 10. Going back, just hit done here. Going back, what that gives us is that is saying that 0.09 came from, think about what this is, that's 0 0.3, that came from 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. And if, again, if you remember my little technique, 3 times 3, you multiply these, just as a little check, 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, see, one number behind the decimal, a second number behind the decimal, 3 times 3 is 9, but there's two numbers. There we go. Let's move this off. There's two numbers behind the decimal. Let's see if I can write my 9. There we go. I'm just on the edge of my writing surface. So it works. This last example is 9 over 1,000. So I'll give you a, ch a task. Is that a perfect square? Take the square root of the top and the bottom. Do you get a single value over a single value? You can't have any decimals. That's got to be a whole number there and a whole number there. This is uh, a little bit more thinking here. How about 9 in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths? 9 over 10,000. Now, I, I don't mind using a, a comma there to separate. What two numbers when multiplied equal 10,000? There's a hint. If it doesn't come to you right away, run for your calculator. But here's a hint. I see an even number of zeros. What if two of those zeros went behind uh, the number 1? Hmm. What's a number 1 with two zeros after it? I'm going to leave that to you. I bet you could figure that out. You might see a pattern. This had just one zero. This had two zeros. Hmm. Odd. Even. Odd. Even. There's a pattern developing with taking our squares. In the last example, and just be sort of a typical classroom example, and this square root should go all the way over, but Microsoft Word doesn't always do that for us. 
what's the square root of these values? Again, I invite you to do the fraction. This is 256 over ones, tens, hundredths, sorry, tenths, I should say, hundredths. That's shaping up nicely. And the secret is you just write the numerator and the fractional bit, the decimal, figure out where it, the last decimal ends. So if that's 0 0.5, that's ending in the tens column. Now look, if you take 245 and divide it by 10, you get back 24. So this technique I'm using must work. Pay attention to the last digit. Where did it land? It landed in the tenths column. Where did this last digit land? It landed in the hundredths column. You can hit the square root on the calculator all you want, but when you look at these, looking at A, I can tell you right now, probably not going to be a perfect square root. It will be something with a decimal in it. A little bit messy. But when I look over at B, this is why I say it's good to know your times tables to a certain extent. Thank those elementary school teachers. Because the square root of 256, the square root of 100, well, what two numbers when multiplied give you 256? I'm going to leave it at that. The homework assignment comes from page 78. You need to get a jump on this. So I hope my video tutorial helped out. 